G'day you bloody dickheads, the vaping fucking bogan. Back once again for another Ridgy Didge review. How the fuck are you lot? Hope you're all doing grouse. Got ourselves another mod from Asmodus. This is their Lustro 200 watt. I think it's sort of a follow up to the Minikin 2 because it's got the sort of touch screen action going on like they've done before. But uh, this has got colour now, dickheads. Ooh la la. Uh, sitting atop that, I have the modular RDA from Viva La Cloud. The drip tip is from Half Moon Mods. Anyway, dickheads, got it at 100 fucking watts with a bit of a boost on there. Take it for a toot. What have I got? 0.16 ohm dragon scale coils from, uh, what's his name? Fucking in Canada, GM coils. Anyway, there you go. Really nice power output, particularly with that little boost in there. I'm definitely noticing the difference from you know the standard 100 watts to the uh, to the extra boost. I think it boosts it. Says here times 20, so it's got an extra 20 watts. It's boosting at the first sort of second or two. Really, really nice fucking uh, ramp up time and power output. Anyway, dickheads, before we get into any more of the fucking lustro, we're going to talk quickly about advocacy. Boring stuff, I know, but we've all got to do our part because, would you believe it or not, governments, corporations, fair dingham, fuckwits, people have got vested interest in tobacco and people smoking. They want to shut down this industry. They want to ruin it. They want to limit it. So you've got to go to the information down in the description to the advocacy groups and join those calls to action. I know Washington at the moment is under a bit of a fucking uh, press with some bullshit regulations. You've got uh, Illinois as well with its over 20, no one under 21 can vape anymore, go down there and join those calls to action and write your representatives on a local level and tell them if they don't fucking support vaping, then you aren't voting for them because that's what really makes them think, dickheads. All right, you know what makes me think? Fucking beer. So we're going to have a nice little rogue brew here. This one is a cold brew IPA, an India Pale Ale blended with cold brew coffee. There we go. I don't think I've had this one from Rogue. Had plenty of their beers before. Tasty stuff, usually. Uh, what does it say? Dedicated to two of our favourite things. Rogue Cold Brew IPA is a hoppy IPA blended with 200 gallons of Stumptown Coffee Roasters Famous Cold Brew Coffee in every batch. Brewed to awaken your senses, Cold Brew IPA is open with a huge hit of coffee aroma that is balanced by a not-so-subtle hop punch. There we go. 82% uh, or 82%, 82 IBU and seven and a half percent. Wow, this will get you going. I haven't had a coffee this morning, so this is right what I fucking need. Well, there you go, dickheads. It's got that sort of uh, sort of chocolate colour, as you'd expect, having coffee in there. A little bit of that sort of ready IPA as well, but uh, oh yeah, she smells like coffee on the nose, dickheads. Fucking cheers. Yeah, nice. That is like an IPA with coffee in it. It's definitely got that sort of herbally, um, sort of piney IPA sort of feel, but the first thing you get is coffee. And then you get this really nice sort of bitterness that's a mixture between like a coffee bitterness and an IPA bitterness. There's definitely a mixing of, uh, of a couple of different bitters there. And it's, uh, yeah, it's very sort of bitter, the taste. Very, very strong and prominent um, black coffee flavor. And it does taste like, you know, an unmilked coffee, a black coffee, and then with a sort of herbally IPA kind of bite to it. That is going pretty damn nicely. And what juice have I got to uh, to pair it with? Well, I got this one from Obi Brews. Obi's Brew uh, Fluff. I've been enjoying uh, one of their other ones. What was it, the, the fucking milk? This is Fluff. Fluff is, it's marshmallow meringue rice krispies with a hint of vanilla. And uh, yeah, I've been enjoying this as well. Good stuff, Obi's Brew. Anyway, if I can see how she goes with a bit of coffee, it should go well. Meringue, marshmallows, coffee. Mm -mm. That is going nicely actually. Yeah, the vanilla and, uh, and that sort of Marshmallow going nicely with the coffee flavour.
Yeah, that's a good pairing, dear kids. Coffee and fucking vanilla, always a good blend. Anyway, what we're gonna do is jump down the up and bloody close, have a bit of a squeeze. I'll run through the menu real quick and show you the ins and outs. And then we'll give you the pros, cons, price, and everything else it does have. Oh, yep, LEDs, dickheads, as motors have gone down the LED path. Yeah. But it's not too bad, it's not crazy LED. Let's fucking have a look around this little lustro. So I've got the pearl white here. It does come in a bunch of different colors. You've got greens and reds and uh, black, obviously, and, um, and blues, and there's a, a sort of teal color. There's all sorts of shit um, from Osmotis, like they've done with the other Minikins. Um, but the paintwork is like what we've seen before. It's very, very nice. This is like a sort of pearl essent white, if, uh, if that makes any sense. You can see there's a little bit of a shimmery pearl sort of feel to it. Get slightly different shades of white and metallic speckles, depending on how you sort of rotate it. Let's get in there, let's get real close. But yeah, as you can see, there's sort of a, a pearl essent kind of, uh, kind of feel to it compared to some of the other sort of uh, colors. Very nice. Anyway, um, what are the fucking bits and bobs? So we've got a nice 510 connection up the top here. That is spring loaded. Um, haven't had any issues with any atomizers. Everything has screwed down here nice and flush. Um, you will only be able to get a maximum of about 25 millimeter atomizers on here without any fucking overhang. As you can see there, maybe 25.5, possibly a 26, maybe. Yeah, 26 might, might be all right, but 25, 26 is really as big as you're gonna get if you don't like overhang. Nice big fire button up the top there that does uh, illuminate with a little LED underneath it And you've got another LED bar down the fucking side here Some are gonna like that some are not gonna like it But it is fairly subtle so if you don't like LEDs you can just turn it off and you don't really notice it there But definitely going to piss a few anti fucking LED cunts off uh, You got the touch screen same sort of look and uh, and feel as the um, as the Minikin 2 but they have Changed it now with a gesture option it defaults or comes out of the box in gesture mode Which means you don't actually need to be touching the screen for it to register you can just huh, Wave your eye. I'll show you about it in a fucking second Anyway, uh, you got USB type C port down the bottom there as I said for updating it and for charging it Around the bottom we've got this funny little doohickey and this is a couple of little LED lights This is your torch function So they've added a torch function as well as LED lights You've got venting over here and around the back a little bit more venting the usual Osmotis engravings as well Fucking pop the uh, the battery door off very solid um, Haven't had any issues at all snug as a fucking bug no movement up and down, no movement side to side. Definitely one of my favorite fucking battery doors um, from a mod of recent fucking times. Inside the battery sled, you've got a nice big ribbon, which is long enough to actually do both batteries. It's a little thing, dickheads. It's a little thing, but they've done it fucking properly. It's nice to see. Now, you've got uh, negative up the top here and positive up the top here, so you're going to be running in series, your configuration. What I do like about this battery sled is the uh, the contacts, and what they've done is they've spring-loaded this, just the negatives, okay? So you've got a spring-loaded for your negative on this end, you've got a spring-loaded for your negative on this end. It's a little thing, and a lot of people probably won't even fucking notice, but why I like this this system uh, as opposed to some others that are just done with springs in you know both in one end, so one positive, one negative, is what happens with this design is you pop your negative end of your battery I've got a Sony VTC6 here with an ODB wrap on it if anybody's fucking wondering But you put your negative end in first and then your positive end in first The reason I like the positive end in in um, this sort of design is what they've done here to get Let me just get the camera to fucking focus is they've actually raised up the plastic molding around the contact point. Fuck, sorry dickheads, I'm bumping my light all over the place. Um, so they've raised up this little rib here, this little plastic rib here. So it's actually slightly higher than the, uh, than the positive contact here. The reason that's good is if you go in negative end first, then you go in positive end first, and I'll try and show you this in the in cam, but my battery is not actually touching any of the contact as it slides in and only when I release the spring in the uh, in the negative end does it make contact with the positive end of my battery the reason I like that is if you've got a tear in the top of your battery and some people don't realize this but your negative is actually all of the outside of the battery okay it's not just this end of the battery this is negative 
terminal of your battery underneath that wrapper. This little center point here is your positive. So if you get a tear across the top of your battery wrapper and then you slide that across a contact, you can actually potentially bridge your positive and your negative terminals across the top here, creating a hard short and possibly venting a fucking battery. So by putting the, uh, the positive terminal actually sunken below the plastic sled, you pretty much eliminate the possibility of creating a hard short if you've got a tear on your battery because the only part of the battery that is actually ever gonna make contact with the positive terminal is once it's all the way in. This section here, the, the negative terminal of your battery isn't really gonna make any contact with your uh, positive terminal as you slide in. Hopefully that fucking makes sense, but it's a little thing that, you know, a lot of mods don't bother with. You know, they just have two springs in the bottom, you just slide your fucking batteries in, Bob's your uncle. Um, you know, hopefully it's never a problem for people, but it's gonna be a little bit safer if you were to not realize you had a fucking tear in your battery wrap and, uh, and you slid it in and, and made a, a hard short. It's, it's pretty much impossible to do that with this sort of battery sled design. Anyway, dickheads, just wanted to fucking uh, point that one out. All right, so one, two, three, four, five clicks, turns it on. What I do like is this little, are your batteries married kind of uh, indicator, and you say yes. Yeah. So it actually just makes you think, uh, have I used married batteries? And that's a point that a lot of people don't realize is when you're using a dual battery mod, don't use batteries that have been used individually in single battery mods because the chemistry gets worn out at different levels and they end up discharging at different rates and you can end up running into trouble with your chip and your batteries and damaging either of them. So having a uh, having a little reminder there to say that use batteries that you've paired together. So you set up two batteries that you only use in two battery mods. Don't use them, don't split them up and use them individually. Anyway, dickheads, here we fucking are with the home screen. We've got our power indicator or our mode indicator up the top here. We've got our voltage being applied. I'm in power mode at the moment, resistance of the coils. Then you've got this little uh, odometer here, which is actually going to read the voltage that you indicate. So it'll re read the voltage here, but it'll also indicate, you know, from 1 to 10 volts how much you're uh, discharging. You've got the wattage that you're at down underneath that. Above that is this little tiny 10 times. That's your preheat function. You've got a, a 10 watt and a 20 watt preheat boost, which is really nice. You've got each of your battery cells being indicated here. It would have liked an A and a B on those, but whatever. You've got a puff counter over here. I've recently reset mine. It's only at 16. And then you've got um, some of your uh, sort of menu options indicated here, and I'll show you how that works in a second. So. What they've done differently with this uh, chip and this screen, um, they've not only added the color as you can see, but they've also changed the way that the whole swipe and touchscreen mechanism works compared to the Minikin 2. Now, basically you can use it like um, the Minikin had where you've got to swipe, you know, touching the screen, okay? Or you can have it, and it defaults to this, where it's uh, it's using a gesture. So I don't actually need to touch the screen. I can actually just wave my hand over it, as you can see there doesn't, there we go, power, TFR, TCR, I'm not actually touching the screen there dickheads, it's like fucking magic, um, yeah, interesting, interesting design or, uh, or feature, um, it takes a little bit of getting used to, when I first started using this I wasn't used to it and I found it very awkward, but once I kind of got used to not actually touching the screen, it, it does uh, work quite well. Now, if you don't like that gesture design, um, all you need to do, have the screen locked, slide your finger up, and you have the option to hit this little hand here. You can turn off the gesture function, lock it in with the fire button, and now, if I unlock the screen, I've got to touch it, and if I wave my hand over it, it's not gonna work, but if I touch the screen, it should, if I not unlocked it, there we go. Is it going to work for me? There we go. You kind of slide across the top of the screen up here. All right, don't go sliding in the middle. It doesn't really work. You've got to do it across the top there. But as you can see, it's much more like the original Minikin design. You know, you're sliding and you're actually touching the screen. Rightio. Uh, so let's have a look at some of these sort of home screens and what you can do with them. Um, as I said before, if you slide up, you open up the option to turn off the gesture but then you can also go in here and turn on your torch. So there you go, there's one light. If I hit it again, 
and you can see it goes to a two. All right, now we've got both of them on and off. One, just one of those LED lights on, two of those LED lights on. So it's a little torch function. You won't be able to see. There you go. I can fucking light up the screen. Very nice. Uh, so yeah, look, if you like uh, the feature of a torch, well, you're going to be happy they've included that. L fire button to lock it in. Rightio. So sliding it up, as I said, will we'll, um, allow you to access some of those sort of functions. But sliding it in other ways does the same. I'm just going to turn the gesture back on because I've kind of gotten used to that. So uh, let's change over to um, the temperature control mode. So slide down to unlock it, and then we can just wave it over. Now we're in temp control mode, lock it in. Now, if I want to go in, and, and as you can see, the screen has changed. We've got a few different layouts. We've got our temperature. We've still got our wattage here, but we can change that to temperature if we like. To do that, we need to unlock it, slide down, and then we hit the, uh, the, the, the fucking power or the wattage, and now we've got our temperature. To adjust either of those, as you can see, just by touching it, it flips between the two. To adjust either of those, you hold down um, for a second, and then you can go in and you can adjust it. Now, you can only go to 120 watts on temp control mode, okay? They don't give you the full 200 watt range, which I kind of get. You don't really need 200 watts if you're doing temp control. Otherwise, you just use wattage. But um, yeah, that is what they've done. Once you're happy with the wattage you've got, lock it in, back to temperature. Now, if I want to um, change my temperature control, I need to uh, flip over to temperature and then again, hold down and I can dial it in in one degree increments. As I go up, it round robins to Celsius. Sweet, lock that in. Let's go over to the TCR cur uh, the t curve mode. So this is gonna run basically in wattage, but you've got the option for a curve. So much like we had on the first one, you can go in and you can play with the wattage curve and the seconds that each of those wattages go for. Fire button to lock it in. Sliding across, you've got your TCR, which again is like your um, you know, your temp control, only you can dial in your own uh, TCR functions. Basically the same function, you've got your temperature there, flip it over, you've got your wattage there, flip it over, and then if I hold down TCR, I can go in and I can dial in my my uh, my TCR. Scrolling across to TFR, you know, very much the same sort of setup. Let's skip some time and then we're back to, to power mode. So there you go. That's that's the fucking sort of each individual mode. On top of that, you've then got the fucking menu to get into as well. So basically, one, two, three clicks will lock the device. One, two, three. System is locked. Now I can't fire it and I can't adjust anything. One, two, three to unlock it. There we go. And you've got five clicks to open up the menu system. You've got power off. If you want to power it off, hold down that uh, red button for a few seconds and it will turn off. So this little uh, pencil is your puff counter. You select that, you can basically limit how many puffs you have. So you dial in whatever number you want to limit yourself to, lock it in. Then if you go over one, you've got the cleanup. So you can basically reset the puff counter back to zero. That's what that does. Scroll across to the next one. This is basically that little potentiometer, not potentiometer, little uh, odometer thing on your home screen. Real means it's gonna display the real voltage output that it is actually uh, applying to the coils. If you go fun, it just means that little fucking dial just goes up to 10 as you're vaping. It doesn't mean anything, so it's pointless. You might as well keep it on fucking real unless you're a Muppet and you just wanna watch an arrow flick across the screen. God knows why the fuck that would be important to you. Anyway, onto the next one. You've got uh, the upgrade function. Hold down the fire button, whatever. We're not going to upgrade it, but now it thinks it is. Moving on, we've got the V. The V refers to what uh, chip they've got in here at the moment. So it's just sort of a variation on the original Minikin 2 chip. Blah, blah, blah. Moving on. Whoop, too far. Back. Go back. Um, and this is your sort of pre-boost, you know, simple, not wattage curve, just a pre-boost. You've got medium, you've got slow, and you've got fast. 
Uh, according to the manual, this is the smoking light, which I can't stand. They've got heaps of references to smoking and cigarette in the manual, which really pisses me off. Um, you know, I thought Osmotus was an American-based company, so why are you getting China to do your fucking manuals, dickhead? Stop referring it to cigarettes and smoking. It's not. But the smoking light is obviously your LED light. You can turn that on. You can turn that off. If you go over to the next one, then you've got the LED colors. You don't really have many options in the way of the LED colors. You've only got red, green, and blue. Um, and that's it. So yeah, it would have been awesome to see a proper fucking, you know, array of colors there. But whatever. Moving on, uh, you've got the uh, option to lock it with slide or with, um, with clicks. So you can do that. You can change that up. Going too far again. Um, this is your screen timeout. That just allows you to dial in whatever seconds you want in the way of screen timeout. And the last thing is the resistance of your coil. You can go in and adjust the resistance of your coil if you think it has read it incorrectly. But either way, dickheads, that's basically the fucking menu system. Very, very simple. And that's about it, dickheads. The only thing that I will point out is the little preheat um, boost setting that we had on there before does change depending on the wattage that you have it at. So at over 100 watts, if you've got it set to fast, it will give you a 20 watt boost. As you can see, the little 20W underneath the dial there. But if I uh, change my fucking uh, power output to 100 watts, you'll see that now has dropped down to, 20, uh, to 10 watts. Okay, so you'll get 10 watt boost under 100 watts, and then once you go over 100 watts, it'll go to a 20 watt boost. So just something to point out. But obviously you've got your own voltage curve if you want to really dial it in, you know, exactly the way you like it. Other than that, dickheads, I think that's about all I need to fucking say on the menu. Uh, let's jump back up top. Let's give you the fucking pros, the fucking cons, the price, and everything fucking else. <laughs> So there you go, dickheads, a bit of a squiz at the Lustro. And as you can see, Asmodus have fucking packed shitloads of features into this. You know, you've got the touch screen, two different options, whether you like the, the gesture sort of thing going on where you wave it, do the fucking magic little hand motion, or you, you know, want to go back to the sort of original Minikin 2 style where you're actually touching the screen and all the rest of it. Um, you've got, you know, all your different functions in there, your preheats, your wattage curves, your TCRs, um, you know, color screen. They've really packed this full of, uh, of lots of different features. They've even crammed in fucking LEDs now. So yeah, in terms of, uh, of options and bits and bobs, fucking torches in there as well. They've included that stealthily on the bottom there. So they really have fucking jam packed a lot into this device. Um, some stuff you'll probably use a lot of the time, some stuff maybe not so fucking regularly. So, what did I like, what did I not like about it? Well, I did like a lot of stuff about this mod. There's probably nothing really, you know, deal-breaking here. There's, there's no sort of issues. There's a lot of it sort of more subjective stuff. Do you like touch screens and colors and LEDs and stuff like that? But, let me go through the shit that I do fucking enjoy about this mod. I really love the clean design um, that Asmodus often go with, and this does look very nice and clean. You know, we've got lots of just metal, just painted metal. We haven't got carbon fiber and other sorts of chrome bits to it. It's just clean and minimal. They have added an LED strip there, which I know some people are not gonna fucking like, but if you're gonna do an LED, you know, I much prefer it like this, you know, similar to the Bat Mod from OBS. It's, it's just a subtle little LED light there, and if you don't like it, you turn it off, and you would hardly even notice the strip there. Uh, I do like the LED in the fire button. I don't know, I just like LEDs in my fire buttons. I like the uh, the color screen now. You know they've kept the same sort of minimal touch screen design. They haven't gone the whole in a sort of smock or um, you know uh, whizmec and all the rest of it with the touch screens. Uh, they've kept it sort of minimal and small. They've just gotten rid of you know the positive and negative buttons. So I do like that. Um, and now they've added color. It's uh, it's a nice little fucking additive there. Uh, the um, the USB port. They've gone with a USB Type C. Something different. Pros and cons in that, it is definitely a better fucking connection. You know, USB-C, uh, you know, seems to have less issues than USB ports, but you are gonna need a USB-C cable for it, which is a little bit more frustrating. You know, you're gonna need to, to carry that cable with you if you're out and about and you needed to charge it real quick, you know, because you're running out of power. Not that I recommend it, but if you do need to get out of trouble with a little quick USB charge, you're gonna have to have the right fucking cable for it. So, 
yeah, you know, make up your own minds as to whether you're, you're happy with that, but we've seen it done on a number of other mods out there in the past, so good to see that they've gone with a, a better quality connection, and hopefully most of the other mod manufacturers will start to move over towards the USB Type-C. So I think it's a good thing that the industry is starting to move in that direction. Um, the build quality, very good as always. The door, no movement, side to side, up and down, very, very solid. Um, it's a quite a small compact device as well. I definitely like the form factor um, and the way it feels in the hand. The paint job, another big pro. You know, it's very much the same as what we've seen from uh, Asmodus in the past, but it is a fucking good paint job. It's a nice, very glossy, you know, very clean, no marks or um, bubbles or any sort of bullshit. So I do like what Asmodus do with their paint work. Um, battery sleds, do like those fucking battery sleds. I like the uh, the, the, the positive spring on each uh, each battery. Um, just minimizes, you know, people short circuiting a battery, sliding it in and out. It's a little thing, most people wouldn't even fucking notice, but I do like what they've done there. Uh, the fucking torch, you know, <laughs> it's always handy to have a fucking torch. Um, yeah. Overall, and the performance, it definitely hits fucking hard. It's definitely putting out the power that I would expect it to. And I like the boost that they've got on there, the 10 and uh, and 20 watt boost functions. I think that's a neat little fucking feature. I, uh, I'm a big fan of that. Um, cons, or what do I fucking not like about this device? There's not a whole lot that I have to complain about here other than, you know, it takes a bit of use bit of time to get used to the fucking screen, the way that they uh, have redesigned the sort of gesture system. Um, it's not, uh, you know, straight away easy to use. It does take a little bit just to get used to, but once you're used to it, it is all right. But some people are not going to like that touchscreen gesture, gesture design. Some people don't like the Minikin 2 sort of touchscreen, and they're not going to like having the, uh, the option for that or the new gesture function. So, more of a subjective con, but I could definitely see some people not liking that. The LED, you know, again, it's going to polarise. Some people are really not going to like seeing LEDs in their mods. Other people are going to love it. I think this is sitting somewhere in the middle of the LEDs. It's not too full on with the LEDs, and it's not no LEDs. It's just a little bit. So I don't mind it. I actually kind of like that little bar there. It's, I don't know. There's something about it. I just I kind of like that. But it's not going to be for everybody. Um, I would have loved to have seen it handle just a little bit bigger atomizers. I understand that you've got the battery sled in the way there and you can't really shift that 510 any more central without making it taller, but I would have maybe gone for a slightly taller mod if I could put, you know, a 30 millimeter tank on here without overhang. So just would have, it's a nitpicky thing. It's a, it's a subjective thing, but I'm gonna fucking throw it in there. Uh, what else, what else, dickheads? I don't like this, uh, pretend, this, this odometer type thing. I, I don't know. I just think these odometer type screens just look tacky and they look just cheap and toy-like. It's not a fucking toy. I don't need a fucking rev, you know, indicator. I just want, you know, the information. I would have rather that stupid little fucking, uh, circle there be just replaced with, you know, a bigger wattage indicator all the time. You know, it just, ugh. Just dumb, just dumb. I don't know, I just think it looks kind of shit. But apart from that, dickheads, overall, I really quite like this device. Um, you know, the screen and the chip, very, very uh, extensive in what it uh, offers you. The form factor, the build quality, um, and the performance, all very, very good and what I would expect from Asmodus. So price-wise, dickheads, what is it going to fucking set you back? Uh, well, this one I picked up or was uh, given to me from the cunts at Vaporize, so fucking cheers for passing it on for review. Uh, they're selling uh, on their site for $110 Australian, so for the Aussies, um, that's where you can pick her up. If you're outside of Australia, you're looking at around about $80 US or around about £60 over in the UK. Doesn't matter where you get it. It's a little bit more expensive than some of the other Chinese devices out there, the likes of Wismec and Smok and iJoy and things like that. But the build quality on this is definitely a cut above some of the others. I think the chip and the, uh, the screen is definitely better than some of the others. The way they've done things like the torch is better than I've seen on others. So, you know, overall, I'm happy to pay a little bit more for this Modus gear, you know, because I know that it is better. And having worked in a vape shop, I see far less as Modus products coming back with returns than I do your other Chinese stuff. So, yeah, 
there's definitely something to be said about the build quality on this Modus. It's a little bit fucking better, so I'm happy to pay the slightly higher price tag. Not much though. So with all that being said, dickheads, I'll put a link down in the description to Vaporize if you want to pick them up here in Australia. I'll also include my Instagram and Facebook links if you want to check out what I'm doing outside of the YouTubes. And if you want to support the channel, please fucking do hit the uh, like, hit the subscribe button. They're both fucking free. However, my channel is 100% independent, which means I don't accept funding, sponsorships, affiliate links. There's no paid reviews here, dickheads. I want to keep it independent and unbiased for you fuckers. But to keep doing that, well, a bit of public support is always loved. So you can hit my Bogan Brews juice lineup. That's down below. It's sold in a bunch of different places around the world. You can also hit my Patreon page. There's prizes, there's giveaways, there's content you won't see here. There's a special Facebook group for the Patreons and uh, there's content and all that sort of stuff that you won't find on YouTube. But if you can't do that, that's all good. Just sit back, fucking sub home your dicks off, sub home your tits off and stay off the bloody stinkies. That's what I'm fucking here for. That's what bloody counts. As long as you're not banging the bungers, we're all fucking happy. Cheers for tuning in dickheads and uh, cheery fucking oh. Got ourselves another mod from Asmodus. This is their Lastro. Fucking, you should.